flare up and uh, remission and stuff Mm -hmm. when in fact I don't have cancer, but like what other terms do you use, right? Like what other words help convey what you're trying to say? So I still get flare ups to this day. I've been dealing with it from since 2013 and it spent, I spent like five or six years just healing, um, like getting on a medicine cocktail that worked to like eating better to just taking care of myself and caring, which is really hard when the thing that put me in that place also like put me in a mental place to like not want to care. Like, like after getting diagnosed, I got really depressed and, um, part of it was the, the steroid I was on has side effects of like depression and anxiety and stuff. So my doctor thought that maybe maybe that was why. So he was like, let's not jump on the giving you medicine to counteract this medicine, which I was all for. Like, I, I, I didn't mm-hmm. want to take antidepressants. So I started seeing a therapist, but not, not easily. Like, I resisted mm-hmm. wanting to go to therapy. I don't know why. Like, there was some subconscious, like maybe society ingrained like if you see a therapist you're broken no um you don't want like, to get I think that I, I, right like i, I that's the grizzly I guess, again yeah yeah <laughs> there's that part of me that was like i'm fine i'm fine but uh when i finally broke down and realized like it can't hurt you know um i started started going to therapy and uh it's it's been difficult because I still deal with those like I'm fine, like I'm I'm totally fine, but I know that I'm not sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I'm just thankful that I did open that door for myself, um, because without it, I honestly don't know where I would be. I don't I don't know if I would trust my friends and my family enough to confide in them like you would a therapist who you don't really have any attachment to Mm. and it's oddly easier to spill like your feelings to someone you don't know (laughs) than it is to someone you do know because someone you don't know you don't care if they judge you but like a friend and a family member like you you don't want to be judged by that so and you you know are you see them almost every day so now how did your art help you through this (sighs) um I I honestly wish I would have turned to it more mm, to like explore those feelings of depression and anxiety to really convey them on paper mm. and see what it would, you know, see what would come of it. Um, I mean, I did like the, I did the comic expo stuff and like, I don't know. I mentioned earlier, like I had a few years, like one year where I suffered and that was one of those years like I I was struggling to get into a, a mental place to want to work, uh, to want to create. And I just, I couldn't. <laughs> I, I couldn't find the motivation, the, the willpower. I just, I kind of gave up on it. And um, I don't know, like being at that convention, like I was, I was not approachable. Like, I probably looked like a sour face the whole time. Mm. And it was just like, I don't know, like, I absorbed this whole mentality of just misery. And Did you ever think, why me? Yeah, a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, why? Like, I know why. It's hereditary. Uh, It it, it strings from uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, From generation to generation, it can mutate into something different. Uh, The 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 why me comes into the percentages. It was like only a 4% chance that I could have gotten it. And wow. I slap dab right in the middle. Mm. <laughs> so that kind of stinks. Um, but also I've, I've accepted it. I haven't always accepted it, but I'm accepting it as like, like I'm who I am today because of this. Like I probably, I probably would have, if I wouldn't have been diagnosed at, 20, uh, at 23 when I felt on top of the world, I I was fairly reckless back then, you know, like 
uh, just like, I don't know, not thinking twice about stuff. And, uh, like I've always had a little bit of a lead foot. Like I like, I'm an adrenaline junkie. Mm-hmm. Like, I like to go to amusement parks and, uh, hence Disney. So like, I don't know. It's it forced me to look at life differently and I've been able to kind of look further ahead than I think most people in their twenties do, especially in my early twenties, like 23, 24, 25, I was really thinking about my life in 35, 36, Mm. you know, 40. Like, what am I going to be doing then? Whereas, like, most people in their 20s are like, what are we doing next weekend? (laughs) You know, like, I'm like, what am I doing in the next 10 years? Mm. So I'm thankful for my disease in that aspect um, because it's opened me up to being more mature at an earlier age than I think. I otherwise would have done on my own. What do you want people to know about it? Can you can you live with this? Yeah, many years. So, yeah, so my my rheumatologist told me that I'm one of two people that he sees with this specific autoimmune disease, hmm. and he and his other patient is like way further down the road than I am. Not like age wise just like in their recovery Mm -hmm. um uh and like they've able to stabilize and remission quote unquote Mm. and so like that gives me hope that i can stabilize one day i would i guess like with my medication i'm stabilized to an extent but i still get flare-ups from time to time so you can live with it you can you can live a long life uh there are some research of it being fatal but it really boils down to those cases are people that don't know they have it and don't get the treatment and by the time they get treatment it's too late Mm -hmm. kind of thing like that typical i guess like standard of i feel like you read about that a lot like people have something that was pretty treatable if it was caught earlier but yeah, and like it's not contagious or anything silly like that, but um, it's not noticeable on you. It's, it's yeah, it's it's, it's an it's invisible it's, disease. It's, um, I do get a little bit I, of the lupus. Like I don't get the butterfly rash that they they call it the butterfly rash, but um, I do get some like skin rashes when I get a little bit of a sun kiss. So I gotta wear a lot of sunscreen and uh, SPF clothes is my best friend. <laughs> Anything else you'd like people to know about mixed connective tissue disease? Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's one of those things like all in, invisible diseases are. Um, just because you can't see what someone's going through, uh, like don't ignore when someone is, I, get, I don't want to say complaining, but like just complaining about like pain or like, oh, I don't feel good. Like, I get judged on the daily at my day job when I'm talking about like, um, like my body hurts or like it aches or like I'm tired or whatever. Like people always judge me and, um, I've kind of developed a little bit of a thick skin for it, but just like, I don't know if, if everyone could be a little bit more sensitive to the issue and maybe research, a little bit about like some of these lesser known invisible diseases. Um, I think that would help everybody understand what someone might be going through. All right. Back to art questions. We're almost done. (laughs) Do you think we have an artist inside of us? Do you think everybody does? I do. I, I really do. Um, there was something that I, I remember in college, uh, not, it's not like a direct quote or anything. It's just more or less, uh, maybe a lesson learned kind of thing. But, um, I, I've always been able to draw like ever since I was little, I've been drawing stick figures. It's kind of hereditary. Like it was a natural talent. Um, but that doesn't mean that somebody can't do it. Like anybody can do it. Uh, if you just put in the work, 
and and I think it doesn't necessarily have to be one thing or the other, but we all have a left and right side of the brain, so we're all capable of creativity, and it's it's being sensitive to your own self and understanding your own personality, your own taste, um, to kind of uncover what that artist in you is. I like that. That's good. So any advice for future illustrators coming up in the world? Um, the like generic stuff is (laughs) draw, 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 (laughs) draw, 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 don't stop drawing. But I think, I think the stuff that we all want to hear is don't give up. Hmm. Says it right there, boys and girls. <laughs> don't give up. Absolutely. Keep keep on keep on creating. The world needs it. Um, where can people connect with you? I, we've mentioned some of the sites before, but just to remind them, we'll put them in the show notes anyway. <laughs> yeah. So I have an Instagram. It's <laughs> it's so dumb. <laughs> it's the Grizzly Artist, but there's hyphens between the spaces. So it's the <laughs> hyphen Grizzly hyphen artist, mm-hmm. like the underscore hyphen or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's. I didn't think of it when I created it because that's really hard to tell people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it, it is what it is. Uh, so on Instagram, the Grizzly Artist, uh, and then on Facebook, you can find me on. Uh, if you type in James Ellison illustrations it, on the search bar, it, it'll, it'll pop up my, my art page. And then I have my website, which is the grizzly com slash my site. Until he gets the uh, money to pay for that. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm on so Wix. Can... I'm on Wix too. And I have the domain name. Yeah. I made it the artist really matters because of course the artist matters is already taken. So I should say, yeah, yeah. let's make it the artist really matters. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Emphasis. And I got the domain name, but now it's, you know, you have to pay. It's just yeah, figuring it out. Sync them up. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. All right. Uh, thanks for being on the show, sharing your story. I hope it's inspired a lot of people here. It's, it's great yeah. stuff. Uh, and uh, of course, the final question Why does art matter? Art matters to me because without it, the world would be a darker place without artists in the world to color our lives. I think it would be a much darker place. So for me, art matters because it's a light, it's a beacon of hope, uh, that I think it transforms us as humans to be more than just, you know, this binary thing. Good answer. That's a good one. Well, thanks again for coming on the show, James. It's been a great pleasure and wish you the best of success. And uh, hopefully we'll be reading your comic book soon. (laughs) Hopefully. Thanks for having me. It's been a blessing. Yeah, that was some story. And I really admire the guy that he didn't allow this mixed connective tissue disease to hold him down. He keeps creating. He keeps running. He allows himself to hike and be active. It's something he can live with. It's an invisible disease, but you know he has to deal with it every day and manages to and creates such great artwork. You definitely got to check it out. And it's pretty funny how similar we are. We, like I said, been drawn since we were kids, and we're into comic books even wanted to create our own comic books. It's almost like looking at a younger version of me in some regards. But I'm so glad he was on the show. And um, appreciate his grisly attitude towards things. It's really great stuff. And he believes that we all have a natural talent and uh, feels we all can be creative in one way or another. You know, it doesn't have to be just one thing. Go out and explore. Draw, write, sing, dance, whatever tickles your fancy. And you may be interested in all those things or some of those things. Could be something else. Just got to try it. Don't limit yourself. Self-limiting beliefs 
are one of the greatest crutches that we put.